We're live, my friend. Woo! We are live. Cheers. That's the Danya. Da. Da. Straight whiskey right here. Um, rum chata and bourbon. It looks like milk and Kahlua, sir. Okay. Um, maybe. I'm not sure, bro. I'm not sure. Mm. Uh, dude, the beard is gone. The hair is gone. Mm -mm. It's been it's been rough. It's been rough. So well, I want like to start I said, with this. I want to start with this. I want to start with um, I I wanna I want to talk about um, everything regarding you, but I want to start about with a very hurtful story of you and Nick Stone oh, sending me pictures when I first shaved my head of uh, of me compared to a certain link in the in the human evolution. But why don't you take it from here and tell the world what you guys were sending me? So there was just a picture that me and Stone found online, and oh, what, uh, what what is it again? Of, uh, so it's a it's a Neanderthal. 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 With a Shaved head, super pronounced eyebrow bone. Uh, yeah, kind of, kind of like that. And this was when you shaved your head, hmm. skin bald. Like I said, that right there is fine. The stubble's good. I like it. You look I like, like a human. But when you skin, yeah, when you, I'm trying to fit in, bro. I'm trying. Can you scorch the earth, man? I don't look yeah, as I'm good. Good. I I shaved it the other day, and I had a lady literally poke at me with a stick. I didn't know exactly what I was, uh, so she poked at me to like listen a response. So I growled at her. I don't know if that was. You don't do that. You okay? No, yeah. uh, no. Okay. But anyways, so we put your picture against because we had a profile picture of you, and then we put because it was a profile picture of that. Picture of me, so we it was it right was now. spot on. So do you know that I took the the uh, the DNA test through uh, National Geographic to see the really? percentage? I did, and the average human being is two percent Neanderthal. Okay, I came back three percent. Oh shit! Yep, so, that sounds about right. So, yeah, thanks, man. So I came back three percent. So they sent me a questionnaire because they're like, whenever Can we, we test you, do it. They did. So they sent me a questionnaire. They're like, we want to know about you. Where Where do you people come from? What cave did you crawl out of? And uh, so they sent me a questionnaire to fill out about like where my family ancestry was from because of that extra percent in uh, in National the, Geographic has that. National Geographic. Oh yeah. wow. Uh, it wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't the twenty three and me. It was something. I forget what they called it, but it was through National Geographic and Brenda bought it for me for my birthday. So swap my mouth, send it in. What? I oh, I'm sorry. Swabbed yeah. it. Yeah, swap. swap. Uh, you did that good. <laughs> yeah, thanks, dude. I was like, huh. how do I? Okay. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't find any instructions, so I was like, okay. Hmm. So, so I send it, and yeah, so I got a, I got a questionnaire about it, man. But I did. So I wanna, I want the world to get to know you, how I know you, and maybe even a little, bit, a little bit deeper, man. I don't want to know that. No, no, no. We don't mm. want to know like all of it. You know what I mean? So, but uh, I'll tell a little bit of like, you know, how we, how we got to know each other, man. So I think you started training jujitsu maybe about six months after, maybe close to a year after I started, yeah. right? And, uh, and immediately, uh, you were one of those guys that, um, you, you, jujitsu resonated with you and you were very passionate about it. And you were not just going to sit there and just absorb through what was being taught in class. So, um, you know, I was, I did, uh, the Q and a yesterday with the, um, Oh, that was badass. We got, we got, you got to keep doing that. Yeah. Yeah, dude, I'm going to do it again, dude. But uh, in the, in the, in the little story time with uh, Uncle Manny in the, in the Dami page, um, I give you all the props that you deserve, man, because you were the one that would bring all these techniques into the academy where everybody was here. And, and all of a sudden, um, you were that guy. So I was telling the story for everybody that didn't know or didn't hear it. Here it is, right? So all of us would be training chose the same right and uh and we're all advancing in this steady line and nobody would take any time off so let's say all of us train train for three months straight and then philip would go and disappear for a month and a half right and next thing you know you would show up and just wreck everybody dude 
and uh, and but it wasn't out of it wasn't you wouldn't wreck us out of like um, just like athleticism with youth or anything like that. It was you were bringing in all these crazy techniques that we weren't seeing in the academy, right? Yeah. So like I remember the first footlock that I saw in the academy, you did it to this little bad boy right here. Hey, hey, so um, so it, so that why so would it, you forget? It, why would you forget fifty percent of the body? Right. Come on. Exactly. Why would you ignore right. that? Why would you for, why would you forget two percent of the body? Right. So you brought in ankle locks into the game, right? So then immediately that changed the chemistry in the room. So to where like all of us went home that night and looked up ankle locks and ankle lock defense, right? And this is pre YouTube, you know, so yeah. it was very hard. So it was very hard to find additional knowledge other than like that little drip of knowledge that you were getting. VHSs and DVDs, man. That's Dude. all we had. Well, do you and you we weren't getting DVDs. You have to get like a very specific DVD, but I'll let yeah. you talk about it, right? So that's how that's how like our relationship started it was just one of those where like i i immediately gravitated yeah dude it was just like nobody else i i remember going to practice eventually like when we started getting better and just nobody wanted to go with manny nobody everybody nobody, hated going nobody wanted to go with philip and it wasn't like i'm not getting better um you know and uh it but um but that's what it was. It was your, you were the guy that would bring in the excitement into the room, push everybody just because you were bringing in all this technique. But uh, so tell us a little bit about how you, what got you started in jiu-jitsu, man, and in your drive for knowledge. So go. So, yeah. So like high school, I would say as soon as I graduated from, cause I always played baseball. I was a baseball kid from like when I was five years old to, you know, senior in high school and stuff. And, you know, baseball was baseball. And, you know, at that time, you know, I was just kind of like, I hated it. You know, I was really just doing it for my dad. My dad loved seeing me play and, you know, going to the games and stuff. So, but I hated, but I always wanted to like do wrestling and I always wanted, but I was so like a skinny little kid. Like I was six foot tall, but a hundred and like 50 pounds senior high school. So I was like super twiggy. But, um, so I started working out a lot, uh, after I graduated and then like at the YMCA and then I saw that they would have like kickboxing classes or whatever. So I, I, you know, wanted to do, I never did like fighting or anything like that. And, but I always wanted to, you know, and, and so 2001. And so I started there, started, you know, uh, doing a little bit of the, the kickboxing that they had at the YMCA. And then I started getting into like, all right, let's learn a little bit more about martial arts and stuff. And oh, here's what's all this pride and, you know, rings and, and pancreation and stuff like that. So it's like, damn, they're going to the ground. What do I do if I go to the ground? So now I'm thinking, okay, I got to have the whole package. Because I, I wanted to continue doing kickboxing. I loved it. Uh, and boxing and stuff. And um, so at that time, there was no YouTube. There was no Google. So it was just the yellow pages. So I was like, oh, man, I got to find the you know, Brazilian jiu-jitsu place. And so I was looking through the yellow pages. I remember how I was many, at. How many listings did you find in the yellow pages so, for Tucson? So at the time, there was just the, the two. Technically, there was three, but I couldn't, I didn't find the other one, which yeah, was, I think, the Ultima. Yeah. Yeah, or uh, Hinsman or something like that. Right, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. I, I did train with that guy. Dude. I don't know if I ever told you that story. But go ahead. So three, right? Can tell with your technique. So yeah. Uh, whoa. No. So I looked up. I looked up some jujitsu. There's two noticeable gyms that I could see. Okay, these guys play, train. So I call one. I call one. Um, yeah, man, come by, bro. We'll you know check it out. Da, 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 da. So I go over there, and they're closed. That they're closed for whatever reason. Like no sign on the door, blah 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 blah, and I could see it. You know, they were they were they had mats on the floor, puzzle mats. I remember, and this tiny place downtown. And I was like, oh man, this place is closed. So I was like, oh, let me check out the other place. So I call that place, and yeah, man, come by, blah 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 blah. We're here right now. Blah, 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 blah. So I head over there, literally, like just to watch because I was like gonna be like ten minutes late. But that phone call right there was literally the deciding factor why I chose one place over the other. Otherwise, I would have been at another place. You would have, dude, that's so crazy. With crazy, huh? Taking you, yeah. 
Yeah. So, and I was, I always think, I was like, what happens if I would have like, they had class there? Cause you know, if I would have just seen it happening, I would have been sold, you know, no matter, no matter what. And that's what happened. So I went up to, to the second place and it was just a packed tiny room. Um, and you know, I got set up probably like less than a thousand square feet. Cause I remember I started in like yeah. super small space. Yeah. yeah. And the instructor was a brown belt at the time. So it wasn't, there was no, I don't think there was any black belts any, in that in Tucson brown. at that time. Dude, when I started, he was blue. Was he really? He was blue and like within, but I started and like within a matter of, Oh no, no, no. He was purple. He was purple. Yeah. When I started, he was blue. And with yeah. a matter of weeks, it was purple. Yeah. I remember, like, he got promoted. But this is how crazy it is, right? Like, I remember listening to, like, Pride Fighting Championship documentary, like, commentary. And they were like, Vandalus Silva is a blue belt. He oh, yeah. Oh, <gasps> whoa. He trains a lot. Dude, he must bro, be good. Blue belt? Jesus Christ, man. Like, he's a blue belt in jiu-jitsu. So that's the level of skill that we yeah. were dealing with here in Arizona, right? Yeah. So. Yeah. Purple belt was like a god. Purple belt was the god oh, at, the, at that I time. Couldn't, couldn't in Arizona. Finish. Yeah. So, yeah. And then that was it. I saw exactly what I wanted to see. And then come by tomorrow. And and you'll try it out, and that was it. Never went back, or uh, never looked back. And I was that dude. So I was young, man. I was nineteen, and and for me, it was like, yeah, I was going to school part time, and I had a part time job, but I had the ability to train twice a day, you know. And and I was there Monday through Sat, or yeah, Monday through Saturday, twice a day, morning classes, night classes, and I mean, I just dove right into it, man. And um, had my had my first cage fight in nine months of nine training. Months? Jesus Christ, man. Yeah. What, uh, what did you, when you started jujitsu, and this is one thing that I always tell people, man, this is when we started training jujitsu, um, there was no white collar training. It was like, if you were training jujitsu, you were fighting, you, or you were, you were planning on, on doing some sort of competition, yeah. some sort of yeah. fight, right? There wasn't there wasn't white collar training with the sense of oh, I just want to train and have fun, lose some weight. Yeah, I'm here for a good workout. No, none of that. Yeah, none of that. It was. Like, when are you fighting next? What? Dude, I remember. I remember training, and they were like, "Hey, man, when are you gonna fight?" I was like, "Shit, dude, I just started like two months ago, three months ago, right?" Which I fought at six months into my training. So that's mm -hmm. that's about right, you know. Like six months in, people started looking at you. It's like, okay, you're you're you need to start fighting, right? Yeah. So when you started training, did you already have in plan to start competing in MMA or jiu-jitsu or what, what was your oh. plan originally just going in? Just to, just to, just to learn jiu-jitsu for self-defense, really. That was it. I, I, you know, I wanted to, I, again, I was a skinny dude. Not that people picked on me or anything like that, but I was like, man, wow. I, you know, I never really got into like fights or anything like that, you know? And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, as I was always like, you know, young dude chasing girls and then you'd get jealous boyfriends or ex-boyfriends and stuff like that. So, yeah, it was just something to defend myself. But, you know, as as I progressed, the, the you know, the coaches at the time were like, hey, you should think about doing this and Nogales. Let's go to Nogales. We're going to do, you know, a I'm cage fight. Over. Point, dude. Yeah, it was. Yeah, right. I think. Yeah. It, yeah. yeah. So, you know, and uh, and it was just one of those things like, yeah, OK. They, they think I can do it and, you know, I'm doing all right in practice. So I, I guess I can try it. And then, but yeah, I mean, but watching like MMA and, and watching King of the Cage and watching like, you know, Rage in the Cage and or going to the Pima County, it was at the Pima County Fairgrounds. I remember when that, they were like on the dirt floors and, the, you know, watching like Drew Fickett fight and watching, um, you know, all the other guys I was scrap it up. Drew Fickett's first MMA fight, dude. Yeah. Yeah. In, uh, just at, a wrestler at the Walkett house. Oh yeah. Okay. Don Fry was walking around with a long ponytail and uh, dude, I like Don Fry was one of my favorites. Man. Oh yeah. Come over here. But, yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I, dude, I, I have a cool story of where I was training judo uh, at ring con, you know, Mr. Owens. And uh, you know, I hear, you know, I'm in the gi and practicing my judo, trying to get good at throws. And I hear, ah, eh, and then I see bodies flying in the other room. And I'm like, oh, shit. And I look and it's, you know, um, not Don Fry, but uh, I mean, Don Fry. And, um, 
you know, all the guys getting ready for, I think, a pride fight or something like that. So I was like, damn, that's cool, man. But that yeah, crazy? that was it. That, isn't that crazy? That generation literally trained in a high school gym. Oh, yeah. Because that's, that's how, that's how primitive the training was, right? It was just, yeah. I'm just going to, so, so what you, was your experience, man? Doing your first MMA fight for that skill level, going in there at nine, at nine months, what made you think that you could do it? And what was that like? Like hearing, hearing the, the, because this is one thing, like when I, when I, when I fought in MMA, I, in a, in a, or like when I fought in boxing, I remember that clink of the cage. Yeah. Like, I remember just like everything went silent, just click. Like, we're here. Yeah. We're, we're doing it's this. It's going down. It's going down. Yeah. yeah, right? Exactly. So. Yeah. I, no, I so, saw. Yeah. I mean, it, once. It's so, again, it's your team, man. It's like if your team believes in you and, 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 and they're telling you you can do it. I mean, they're the ones that put that in seat in your, you know, in your head, they plan, unless you came in there with, you know, intentions of wanting to fight. But again, I did not So, you know, I believed in my team and I thought, you know, I, we had the best team. We had the best fighters. We had the best, you know, and I'm, I'm hanging in there with these blue belts, these tough blue belts. And, you know, the, the, the saying that I, I would say in every match, you know, and, and I don't know if you remember but this hey, and right. being in the back. Hey. Yeah, you, 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 I'd have my earphones in and, you know, believe in your jiu-jitsu and your jiu-jitsu will believe in you. And, I mean, as stupid as that sounds, man, you got to believe in it. And that's – It doesn't sound stupid, man. It's like it's yeah. probably one of the wisest thing I've ever heard. It's yeah. like if you – and ultimately what it translates into is believe in your skill. Yeah. And if you believe in your skill, your skill will do the work for you, right? Yeah. Believe in your jiu-jitsu and your jiu-jitsu will believe in you. I remember you saying that, and I was like, fuck, I'm stealing that, man. I'm yeah. stealing that and running with it. Yeah. yeah. But it was fun, man. It was, it was, it was uh, a fun, fun, you know, it, it, you don't remember anything. So, I, you know, I, I still don't to this day remember how it goes down. Like, luckily, there's videos of it. But the one thing I did remember was because I finished it with the triangle within like a minute, right? Super quick. Got it to the ground. Did my jujitsu. But I remember – um, my adrenaline dump and then my legs feeling so okay. dead and tired. I was like, if I don't get in here, I'm, I'm going to have baby deer legs and I'm not going to be able to get them. <laughs> and as soon as he tapped me, I was like, oh, thank you, Lisa. Thank you, Jordan. I can't wait to go Jesus! This. Yeah. But yeah, man, that was fun. That was a crazy experience. And then that was it, man. Just, you know, wanted to be... And at that time, you know, I think for us... You know, now that, you know, we, we, we live our jujitsu life, right? I think that the MMA aspect of our training in the beginning kind of held us back jujitsu wise, you know what I mean? Like sport wise, mm -hmm. you know, I think, I think we were, and that, that was kind of the thing that, you know, we were fed to. It's like, you know, oh, we, we don't want to do those tournaments in Phoenix other than, you know, Desert Quest because, you know, blah, 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 whatever. But or Pan Ams or don't we we don't want to go as like now we go as a huge team we go to nationals we go to you know um, Masters of Worlds Pan Ams like we don't have, we didn't have that back then we didn't have that support you know and like you were talking about yesterday like you're going to this giant national tournament for a sport that you you know love and you know the support factor if it's not there it's tough to compete you know but like back to what I'm saying is like for me like the first like you know white belt blue belt i wasn't doing jujitsu to do jujitsu i was doing jujitsu to do jujitsu to fight to win mma fights you know what i mean i wasn't trying to do like spider guard or lasso or anything like that it was all right i'm gonna take you down i'm gonna stay on top i'm gonna you know mount you i'm gonna choke you if you roll over i'm gonna arm bar you or stuff like that or i'm gonna pound you you know, so I feel like for me, like the jujitsu sport aspect of it um, kind of suffered a little bit. You know what I mean? And it would show like if we go to tournaments, yeah, I would maybe win like state or something. But like if I would go up against like a GD guy or somebody from like a really good school, so I'm like, oh, what is this? De La Riva. Or jujitsu, right? Like the new yeah. control that it's a different pace and it's a different pace. The positions are different. Um, you might not necessarily be thinking about passing guard if you're inside right. some guard in MMA, right? Where yeah. in jiu-jitsu, you're absolutely focused on that, right? Yeah. You're absolutely I'm focused. on top. I won. No, yeah. he took you down. He 
you know, pull right. guard. You lost by points. Oh, what? But I'm on top. I don't yeah, matter. Exactly. And I didn't know. Honestly, dude, I didn't know points until like really like purple belt. Oh shit. Oof. I know. I didn't well, know. So I, didn't know. I was, dude. I was the same in the. And I and I remember, like I said, like for me was a lot of it was suffering a devastating loss at brown belt where i where i realized that number one i didn't understand how to control a match i didn't yeah. understand the points i didn't understand how to guide the pace of a match yeah i realized how amateur my approach was oh, to, yeah. to to a sport that i wanted to be really good at you know yeah and uh and uh and then a lot of it had to be like rewritten like when i went to train with frangina right where I would just sit there quietly and just like pick their brain or like just let them talk about jujitsu mm. strategy and stuff. And I was like realizing how little I knew about that aspect, mm. right? Even at brown belt, even after like winning, like you said, like winning the States, winning like, you know, like local tournaments and stuff, placing at those international tournaments. But still there was a whole aspect of the game that I wasn't like, I wasn't proficient at. And if you want to win, you have to know, man, like you have to know that, when are you going to stall? You know, are you going to stall? How are you going to stall? You know, and what happens when the referee hits you with a penalty? Mm -hmm. You know, and you got you got to have like the knowledge of your sport to be like, I'll take the penalty, dude. I'm winning. You know. Yeah. So, but uh, so what was your so you transitioned to blue belt to purple belt? What was your journey like at that at that rank, purple to brown? So, purple so. And brown. Man, so for me, so I got promoted to blue pretty quickly. I got, so literally after like my first fight, I got my blue belt. So after like nine, I didn't even train a year yet. And I was already a blue belt, which was fine. Cause you know, I was going up against blue belts at the desert quest and, you know, doing all right, winning and stuff. And at blue belt, I would say it was more like, all right, I want to focus on, you know, MMA. I want to like, oh, I want to do king of the cage. I want to do UFC. I want to you know, try to, try to make it big. And so a lot of, a lot of the training, you know, was like basic, basic boxing, you know, obviously working with you or like Chris Valdez um, and uh, trying to get good with my wrestling. Like that, I learned wrestling from ne zero wrestling, right? So learned it from Ed Carrasco and Augie and Mike. Um, and that's when they had just come over too. So they were, you know, once that happened, like you were saying yesterday, man, we just blew up conditioning wise and just having overall wrestling game. Like that was so, did. yeah, yeah. Percent. we truly did. I always say that I, I had, I had jujitsu matches, but I never had a jujitsu fight because yeah. those guys made it into a fight. Yeah. Now I remember like those guys coming in as white belts, right? Oh, yeah. Just in press in jujitsu and me being like a blue belt or a purple belt. And next thing you know is I go home like yeah. eat up with a swollen yeah. eye, you know, like a yes, right? <sighs> like a like a like a half broken <laughs> finger. Like, uh, right, bro, jungle you know? rules, all right. Yeah. And or and like you have like guys like Augie like going, Hey man, I'm not sure if this is legal, but you know. Right? Yeah. So I remember going home to like looking in the mirror and I have like a black eye, like yeah. this guy's like half swollen. Um, like a quick story, dude. I was trying to sweep Eddie from half guard, right? And this Easy. is not and this so this is not a this is not like a knock on Eddie, but it's just a, a perfect example that mine fuck story. Eddie. Dude, hundred percent. I remember shooting underneath him for to try to sweep him and he headbutts me. Oh yeah. And I go is it's clearly an accident, yeah. right? Hundred, hundred 100%. So I set it up again and I shoot for another underhook to try to sweep mm -hmm. it and he headbutts me again. and I go, uh, Eddie, Come on, he okay. me. and he goes, you're trying to sweep me. And I went home that night and understood what, where my mindset needed to be. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? So for me, like I, my game, like shut up, like competition wise, like after wrestling with guys that would turn into a fight to, to like, see like micro metal. I remember getting something on micro metal. God bless dude. Fucking God bless micro metal. Um, Mad Titan. It, it, the Mad Titan dude. But like one of those lucky times, right. Where I got him in something. And I remember mm -hmm. micro metal taking his knee off and throwing <gasps> it against the wall. Oh, yeah. And I was like, did I do yeah. something wrong? <laughs> Is he gonna hit me? You know what I mean? But that's the level. That's how much 
if you want to get good, that's how much you have to care. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Be like, I remember oh, those. Bro, I lost. No, no, no. Yeah. You got to care. You got to yeah. care. You got to care in practice. You got to care for a point, for a sweep. And it changed the way I look at things, man. Like, for me, like, oh, yeah. I'd be rolling with somebody today. And if they. Oh, it's different. If they throw. I don't know what it is about it, dude, but it's immediately after I start rolling with these guys. If somebody tries to get me in a triangle or somebody almost sweeps me, yeah, it's on. Oh, yeah. You just insulted. Yeah. No, I remember that, the Brazilian thing, dude. Yeah. No. <laughs> tapa. Tapa, right? Tapa. Yeah. Dude, that's yeah, we're on. I was being nice to you, and then you try to get me in a triangle, you try to sweep me, now it's on. Motherfucker. Right? Motherfucker. Motherfucker. But it's a switch that happened after those guys came on. Yeah. Well, that was a fight, man. Those were, those were the guys that brought, like, all right, all right, you want to fucking grind this grind. Like, let me put, I'm going to, I'm going to knee cut you, but I'm going to put my head on your chin. I'm going to make you look away. Don't look at me, puppet. I'm going to grind. Me, yeah. Don't look at me, puppet. Yeah. I'm going to grind like, on you. That's a Frangina special, right? Yeah. The, the, oh, yeah. That's a, the, that means the, fuck you, mid match. Ah, oh, shit. What did I, I do? I love that, dude. I love what did I do? Frangina and like having that half guard. And I understand he's going to pass, dude. But there's something that just makes me smile. To know that I'm getting smashed, yeah, Frangina. With his, he wants to hurt you. Chin. He wants to hurt you. He wants to hurt. I you, love man. it. Something they're so beautiful, dude. It's I so know. gorgeous. It's. I had, I had, I had, I had the uh, privilege of feeling that. This was this year. Did we went up there this year? Yeah, it was this year, yeah. February, before all the shit happened. Where he, we were getting ready, man. We're doing the Pan Ams camp, and he was, you know, the the the. You know, at fifty years old, dude. Yeah, bro. That's. Oh my god. Oh my god, dude! And I remember too, cause I was like, okay, I, can I just want to work half, uh, you know, side control escape? And then he would get so mad if I ever got out or no. Yes, let's go dude, again. Let's go. So let's mad. go. Love it. Love man, it. Man, don't get. Yeah, no, dude, I love it though, that. man. Old man still has it. Dude, he does, man. I uh, I remember rolling with him. Like I went over to uh, to pick up Elias right up right before after the cancel pants. I went and got him, and I, I was rolling for Gina. And we're doing competition training, right? Because we're still training for pants. And I, I did, I did good in one in a in a match. We're doing like uh, we're doing like the shark tank, right? You stay in as long as you do this, right? So I do that with Frangina. And the next guy is coming in, and Frangina just goes, "No, dude, he doesn't even Go say away. anything, dude. He goes, Go away, dude.' And I and I look over, and I'm like, shit. But but I I, I want something I got, to do. Yeah, I pass so I down. can dude. So because if you won, you got to pick the position. Right. Yeah. And he goes again. Yeah. <laughs> right. And then that's the Frangina special. Dude. Yeah. That hit underneath uh, is just dude. I love don't it. look at me, puppet. Yeah, uh, man. Ooh. So uh, yeah. So then purple to brown, dude. Tell us about your. So how many MMA fights you had throughout your career? So I have six MMA fights. Um, one of them, which was the second one, it was weird. So I don't know if you remember. So like back in the day, Arizona was like the last state to be sanctioned, I guess. Mm -hmm. So it went through like a weird phase where it was like, you're you're not a pro, but you're not amateur either. You, yeah. So you but you're still getting paid, and there was no blood check there's no hepatitis there's no uh, none, of none of that so yeah and so and then it got to so i had some ah oh man i can't remember but yeah so six total fights five wins one loss and then um it was weird man like if you look at my work record if you look up like i don't know sure dog if that's still around like it, it says like i'm four and one and then one or something like that Mm. Yeah, but okay, if no you problem. look at like my first two fights, it says pro pro, and then the third one's an amateur, which you can't do that. You can do that once you go. Pro. Once you go pro, yeah, it's yeah. weird. But anyways, but that was the time where they switched to like, hey, we're sanctioned now, but it was when you couldn't do close fists. You could only even as a pro, you could only open and boss rooting style. Well, you you had to agree with the other guy. Like, even though it was pro, you had to agree with the other guy because that was. Oh, really? Was, I don't remember that. I just I just fight. heard. Okay, we're just doing open hand strikes. Yeah, with my fight, I remember the guy. 
even though it was my first MMA fight, the guy yeah. who was who was considered pro. So they had to agree, and I was like, do whatever you want. So the guy goes, okay, let's go open him. Do you know that dude was in uh, Ultimate Fighter? No, really? The guy you fought? Yeah, yeah. How did he do? He, uh, I think he won. I, if I remember correctly, he won a couple matches. I think he got to, like, the semifinals, something like that. But I was like, who is this guy? So I looked him up. I was like, oh, he loses to Manny Flores. I was like, oh, shit. All right. There you go. I remember that, dude. That was a fun night, too, man. Oh. But, yeah, so Purple Belt, I was starting to get more. I, I stopped. Uh, or Purple Belt was my last match in MMA. Mm. Um, it was a kind of a weird time, man, because I was like freaking in school for like five, six years, college. And I was like, oh, man, I got to finish up. So I started like winding. I only had so much time in the day, so I was dedicated just to jujitsu. And so I started doing more tournaments and stuff like that and more gi tournaments. And, what, term- and- what tournaments were you doing? Uh, so at that time we could go back to doing the GD tournaments. There was a time where we couldn't do GD, GD tournaments for oh, politics. Man. And, but you I know what though? That we couldn't do that. That and, messed and us up. It's funny that you mentioned Chris Valdez because even when we were training for MMA, um, I remember all of a sudden we couldn't train with him. Remember yeah. that? Yeah. And I was like, dude, so that's what led to one of the biggest arguments where I don't know what, I don't know what entitled me which i had no sense of entitlement but i i felt like that so one of my biggest problems was the guys that were active in mma i felt that were getting hurt by creating this insane rivalries with people that had no grounds you know so like next thing you know we couldn't train so like number one we could never train with the rincon guys right so we couldn't train with the rincon guys we couldn't cross train with the other gyms right and next that was unheard of, bro. That was unheard of. It was unheard of, right? Do that. Open open match it to train with other people, crazy. Fuck that then shit. We couldn't we, we couldn't train with Chris Valdez. No. So in my in my in my flawed mind, I'm like, dude, you which is crazy, right? For me to to question the instructor, but I'm like, dude, what makes you what makes you say that we can't train with this guys where it, this is going to lead into one of our guys getting hurt? And that's where, that's what like got us butt heads. It is like, dude, yeah. you can't. We're gonna get hurt, man. When yeah. I say we, it's like our guys that are competing in MMA are gonna get hurt. Yeah. You know, in jiu-jitsu, you get caught in a submission, you tap, and then that's it. You're, hopefully, you didn't get hurt. But for the guys that were fighting in MMA, man, like I remember, like guys like, like Nick Stone. Oh yeah. Row. Right. Yeah. Row. I think I think all of my fights, I have a collective stand-up time of about. Two minutes, right? Yeah. Well, dude, like, dude, you had a phenomenal shot, man. You, and you yeah, had I a mean, really good question, uh, uh, question mark kick. Yeah. So it made yeah. people think immediately, like, oh, this oh dude, he's a, a really good stand up. Right? Yeah. So they sometimes it shot in on you, or they're expecting yeah. more of a stand up, and then you turn yeah. it, right. But uh, yeah, dude, it's uh, it's unheard of that we could cross train with people, but that will, that's what got us to butt heads was the fact that we couldn't cross train with, and even cross. I didn't want to, I didn't care about cross training with other jiu-jitsu gyms. I cared about what happened when we couldn't take somebody down, right? That was a big right. thing. Oh, what yeah. happens when you can't take someone, because MMA started getting to that point where what happens when you can't do it? What happens yes. when being on the bottom is not good for you? Yeah. You know? What happens when you can't sweep or submit and now you're taking shots? So that yeah, was yeah. the biggest argument that I had, you know, but, um, but uh, so. Yeah. Crazy man, it's crazy, crazy time. Well, and so and but no, so that that was kind of like my reintroduction to sport jujitsu, that purple belt. But again, at that time, we could do, um, you know, the GD tournaments, which were they're still the best tournaments. And I mean, I I love the way that they have always done everything. And you know, for us to not do those tournaments, we were I, I felt like we were held back because. We would only go against Brarusa guys, or we would always go against. Or it wouldn't give us an honest read on our skill. Right, you can't. Right? Yeah, yeah, you couldn't. That, that, the, that was the top part, of the top. That's the scary that, part. Is like how how do you get a true honest read on your skill? Right. Only doing this tournament. Right. And guys are competing on sweatshirts, or guys. Are, you know what I mean? Do you remember oh, that? Yeah. Doing the yeah. Doing those uh, desk requests. Yeah. Where, like, you're doing the nogi and a guy's in a sweatshirt. And yeah. I'm going up against a fucking – I'm a blue belt. I'm going against a green belt and an orange belt and pancreation. Like, what the a, fuck a, is that? A blue belt. I fought a green belt. What the fuck I, is a green belt and pancreation? 
Right, exactly, man. So, the, yeah, exactly. So you had the pancreas teams back then, right? So, um, so yeah, so it was crazy. You couldn't get an... What was that girl's name? Big old buff girl. Oh, Scared crap, the shit crap, out of everybody. Crap, crap, girl. Crap, 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 girl. That team. Yeah. So, um, yeah, the, to me, the biggest concern is, like, we couldn't get an honest read on yeah. how good what we're getting. Right. As we went against the GDs. Oh, yeah. Guys. Or the other tournament, or the other teams in Phoenix, you know, outside yeah. the GD, there was other people. Um, which is funny, dude, because when we opened, like, Damio, the first one to approach me and give me, and give me any words of encouragement was Gustavo. Yeah. You know? Um, I'm sitting there, like, I'm, I'm taking, like, my first, like, four guys to a tournament, right? When Damio was, like, 850. I remember that. 800. Where I had to sneak away and, and cheat and go with my Sancho and right, go right. train with you. So. Yeah, man. So... But I, dude, so I took like four guys to compete and Gustavo, next thing you know, it's like Gustavo standing next to me. And I think like my entire time, I've said like three words to Gustavo, you know, my entire time. And oh, yeah. you know, he's like standing next to me. So I'm like, oh, it's... hey man, you're there, you know? And, uh, and he's like, uh, he's like, I knew you would eventually open up your gym. And, uh, and he gave me some really wise words as far as your students becoming your training partners. Yep. How long it would take. And he told me to be patient. Um, and I was like, dude, because I was kind of anxious about when I could compete when all my yeah. students were white belts, you know? So he was like, it's going to be a while, man. But yeah. eventually they will become your training partners and then you can jump into competition. Yeah. And I and I took that too hard, man. Gustavo was that was a scary time. time. Yeah. Gustavo, dude, I, I equate Gustavo to to uh david boy dude like gustavo comes in <laughs> the fuck? dude dude that's how he is dude like you've never heard <laughs> people boy. talk about dude i talked to david boy for 30 minutes you never hear that you always hear like i'm here standing here mind my own business david boy comes in like this cloud of mysticism he's right? got a gold lightning on his face and, shit. Line, and he goes you will do good I'm oh good. shit damn he blessed you huh Boop. and then he like just like scours away you know and then and he like, floated away uh, on a dark crystal and then you're like Did that just fucking happened the, i do like talking to david boy is like what i equate to talking to gustavo it was like it was like it was like 15 seconds of wisdom and then he just went shit. away and i was like dude i was like hey man shit happened and the guy was like what, what are you talking about i was like he was right. there's smoke around you <laughs> yeah he's like yeah so yeah but go ahead man that was my experience. I don't even know what we're talking about. You messed me up with a David Bowie. You got me all twisted, bro. You got me all twisted. Um, but so yeah, and so then purple, uh, purple to brown, purple to brown. Um, yeah. So like I said, that was that was kind of like my my reintroduction to like sport jujitsu, oh, competing, go, oh going to Pan Am's for the first time and just when getting. Did, when did you first go to Pan Am's? Did you go out purple belt? Purple, purple belt. belt. Yeah, because because. Yeah, that's rough, man. It, well, so I didn't, I didn't, that wasn't a focus for us that like, you know, I'm like, all right, we got to go like for us, nationals, Pan Ams, you know, all those, the, the yeah, right, yeah. regional opens, you know, those are the ones that we focus on a lot. And then this, obviously the States, we didn't have that. We just, yeah, let's do the, we'll just do the desert quest and we're good. Talk about desert but, quest. I gotta go pee. Desert quest was like, uh, like, um, it was a grappling tournament. It was it was uh, a gi and no gi, mostly no gi kind of tournament that was around back in the day. There was two main tournaments in Phoenix back in the day. Um, so it was the Gustavo tournaments were, were just strictly gi and then the Desert Quest tournaments. And so Desert Quest had a little bit more lax rules. They're a little bit more um, not. So IBJJF, so you could do like heel hooks and stuff like that and, um and so at that time um you know for for us a kind of the the test um for our skills was the desert tur- there was zero tucson tournament zero so um you know not like we have now we have a lot, which is awesome we have a ton of tucson tournaments but it was either desert quest or a gustavo tournament and so um at that time my only gi experience tournament wise was desert quest so i'm you know going out to one of the biggest tournaments pan ams as a purple belt and i just get annihilated i'm not versed and you know at that time it was like 
the cool thing to do was like the barambolo and i'm like oh i'm gonna go out there and Man. do what i do i'm gonna triangle everybody and pan ams and Is you this know when the guy rid your gi no, that was that brown belt. That oh, was that brown belt. Christ, man. So uh, I was like, oh, man, why is this dude going behind me? Why is he? Oh, he's inverting? Oh, what? Are you he's got my back? In the air, bro? What the? Oh, <laughs> right. What and is this bro like, Smash it. Smash yeah. it. Yeah. So, and yeah. So, you know, it was just one of those things where it was such a new thing that, you know, if you weren't hip to all the new stuff, you weren't gonna succeed at that level or at least know how to defend it but the flip side was of that was well Hodger doesn't do all that stuff Hodger does take down mount and choke basic stuff you don't need to learn all that stuff which to a certain extent is true right you should have the but fundamentals you down understand this. That's the yeah thing. if you're yeah, not but, like like to me it's like i don't need to i don't need i don't need to know how i don't need to perform it as my my main game but I need to understand it to understand what the next step and what this guy is doing. I can shut it down. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. Well, but, and so like for the longest time, you know, I would think, ah, oh, it's true. Hodger only does this. He does. I don't ever see him doing, bar, you know, Baron Bola. I don't see him doing lasso or spider, you know, but there's always exception to the rule. And Hodger is the exception. Like that dude, he doesn't, he doesn't have to, that dude's like six, six. You know, 250 right? yeah, pounds. Yeah. He's, yeah. he's, I'm not 6'6". Six, six. I'm not 250 pounds. I don't, I can't impose my will like that and, and just take down, knee cut, go to mountains and cross choke people. I got to, you know, I got to develop my own game. And so it was a wake up call, man. And it was like, damn, this is, this is jujitsu. Like I felt, I felt super like not supposed to be there like i was like right underdeveloped right. i was not a purple belt in like the jiu-jitsu world in tucson sure i was like a bad dude maybe but even in phoenix you know and uh yeah it was just a wake-up call but you know at the same time it was like all right i gotta I, I gotta get back into it i gotta learn the new moves and that was like okay i gotta go to 101 submissions i gotta look at this posit rewind it okay how did he do that okay i gotta do this right, so that this is where we get to that point right so like i said like i credit you uh i give you a lot of credit for like bringing that to those like weird you know new techniques into the academies right um but you were getting them from like the only source that we had at the time which was 101 submissions 101 submissions yeah okay. mark layman mark layman right yeah so which, dude, I, that guy was, like, one of the people that I would love to watch. It was always, like, Mark Lehman and Dean Lister and, like, Tyrone Glover, Jeff Glover, Bill Marcelo Cooper. Marcelo Garcia back in the day. He Marcelo was, Garcia. He a lot of his 101 submissions. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, and then, you know, looking at all the grappling, uh, grapplers quests and, you know, all the, you know, there was no YouTube. I mean, I guess YouTube was probably around, but it wasn't, like, it was as, garbage, you know? yeah. like, it, was, it was it wasn't legitimate people putting their content there. Right. It was like yeah. guys putting like half of a half a, of a uh, understood move into into YouTube, you know. So you couldn't yeah. really counter it was like, okay, this is a legitimate source of learning. And at that point, at that point in time, I mean it was like, okay, we do have gym secrets. This is what we do. We can't really show it. You know, this is we're a half guard team or we're a this guard, we're a you know, spider guard team. So at that time, you know, gyms were still kind of like closed to right. their and techniques. What so they don't understand is the 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 the, vis the divisiveness between teams came from yeah. having legitimate gym systems, right? So for example, I read an article talking about like the developing of a half guard, right? Or or like the development of the Lahiva, where Carlson Gracie, you have the Lahiva and then you have Gordo that develop developed those two games, right? The Lahiva develops the Lahiva, Gordo develops half guard. And um, and they are not allowing people to come and train with them because they are developing this game that is changing, right. revolutionizing their game of Jiu Jitsu. Yeah. So I think we had we had that niche also like part of our team, you know. But then you had GD that was Spider Guard, you know, inversion already. Yeah. Like none of us inverted back then, you know. And we were getting caught in inversion, and instead of uh, trying to have like an understanding of it, it was like smash it. I was like, dude, that's yeah. not the answer, you know. But uh, but go on, man. 
So yeah, so that was really our our way to get better as as at, in live competition, the ability for you to see those matches, pause it. Hopefully, it's in a good angle that you can see what grips they have or what they're exactly they're doing, and then make a guess on how they're doing this. Like you didn't have somebody breaking it down, and so you know, I probably did ninety percent of the stuff wrong. You know, I probably had that one key detail that I wasn't doing right. But, you know, it, you know, certain things worked and certain things clicked. And, you know, I hated being on top. Like, I hated – I wasn't good at wrestling, so I kind of knew I was going to be a guard player. You know, I had long, skinny legs. Like, I was naturally, like, 170 pounds. And so, I, you know, I, I, you know, spider guard and, and, and not even lasso, man. Just spider guard was, like, my thing, you know. And that's all. Like, if you can get past my spider guard and triangle and – you know, you won or if. big if. If. if, yeah, or and then or straight ankle locks. You know, straight ankle locks. I love to do straight ankle locks, but yeah, man, that was really the only thing that I could look to to for answers. If my coach, you know, didn't have you know an answer for the barambola at that time or something like that. So, and it was so, really just kind of look for us, like having to find those answers on our own. You know what I mean? Yeah. So we get to brown belt, man. Let's talk about. Brown belt to me was such a purple belt. I hated because I almost quit at purple belt. Yeah. And uh, just because like work, and I, I I shouldn't say quit like permanently, but I was almost like, dude, I'll, I want to say I want to share something that with the with the crew with the people out there. So like, Manny lives and breathes jujitsu. Right? Lives and breathes. It. He's all about it. He's got, you know, he's just Mister Jujitsu. But but in the but, day, in the day, back in the day. Manny, just like a bear, would hibernate in the winter. Uh huh. Yeah. So as soon as it hit like seventy degrees in the in the October's, we would never see Manny until February. Oh, it's, it must be winter time. I'll see you in February, Manny. And uh, he would take the whole winter off. He just hated being in the cold gym. Dude, that is so yeah. true. Uh, well, you know what? You know what it was. It That's was why I started sucking in the winter. I didn't have. I didn't have that. Was also, no to beat dude, me up. I, I love you, man. But, dude, that is so true. To me, October, November, and December were times to be at home with the family. Yeah. Um, just because, like, I was – dude, there were times where, like, I would work 6 p.m. to 4 a.m., Yeah. you know, and I would wake up at 10. So by the time I woke up at 10 or 11, um, the kids are at school, my wife's at work. You're driving across town to go to practice. Right, exactly, right? So – I was like, dude, these months need to be about me staying home with the family. Yeah. But yeah, dude, so that was that was my routine of, of taking those months off, you know? Yep. And then dude, we, would all, we would all suffer. We would all suck. Remember that, dude? I will always come back heavy. Super fat. Like dude, 260, 270. Never Sick. got above 252. Never Sick. got above 252. I was smelling like cookie dough and tortas. I is the one that threw me down, dude. She was the one that betrayed me because... I was going to compete, and I competed. I made the weight, but I was going to compete in a 210. I remember the cutoff of that weight was 210. And and I'm stuck like a 215, right? And I'm stuck at 215. So our coach runs into Brenda and says, hey, how's Manny's weight? And uh, and she goes, well, if he stopped eating cookie dough, he Ooh, would make the weight. In the middle of the night, too. Dude, Metabolism's so all low. Good. I don't remember this. I would wake up in the middle of the night and I would like run my finger through the cookie dough. And then I would wake up in the fridge like smearing cookie dough. And I would go back to bed. So Brenda would be like, why is there cookie dough smeared in the fridge? (laughs) So my nickname was cookie dough for like the longest time in the gym, right? The cookie monster. uh, Yeah, dude. But it was, uh, I don't know. It was to me, it was was also like uh, a little bit like fun of like coming back like out of shape and be like, you still you know. catch me. You know what no, I mean? No, no, no. Like, Not even, man. No. And, shape, and you're, you're the one and you're the one that was saying that oh Philip would take weeks off and, and everything. No, 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 no. That was you. You would take time off and then everybody had a everybody wanted to get Manny because he was the big old He was the big bull. Okay, he's back, he's tired, he's fat, he's thick. Let's get him. Let's and get no, him. still, still you still would jack us up and but that was fun, man. Those are those are the days, man. I and you know, it, dude, it's I, dude. So here's the thing that I wanted to bring up. It was like when I opened Damio, it was we had a really good group of people that started training with us. But you know what was missing? 
the shit talking. Yeah. The shit talking is what was missing. And thank Come on, let's go, motherfucker. Thank God. No, dude, yeah. not even that. It was like, thank God we have it now. Yeah. But when I when we left, when I left the old academy, you would take somebody's you would get a choke on somebody and you would start singing this song. Go to sleep, ho. Oh, go to go sleep. Go to sleep, ho. ho. <laughs> you tired, tired, be quiet. Go, go to sleep, ho. ho. Go to sleep. <laughs> Dude, so if you can imagine, shh, shh, we would have, like, we would have like maybe like uh like maybe like eight matches going on on the map, yeah. right? And everybody's quiet. We're just there was yeah. no maybe maybe okay no there was the same Lincoln Park CD player. Right? So we're all be rolling, everybody's kind of quiet, and then out of that corner, go to sleep, ho. Oh. Oh. Dude, dude, and to then sleep. it was Hated. like whoever I was fighting, we would stop fighting to love. Someone's going to sleep. Someone's, someone's going to sleep. sleep. Someone's going to sleep. Someone's going to sleep. Stop, 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 stop. Right dude, somebody's, somebody's in a choke. Oh, shit. Some, somebody's going to sleep. Are they going to tap? Are they going to tap? Someone's going to sleep. Oh shit, he's unconscious. He's uh, unconscious. He yeah. dude, we would go revive him. that dude, dude. You know, then like whoever was fighting would be unconscious, you know, with their arms up. You yeah, remember yeah. when we put people to sleep, we'd have to cross their arms and sit them up and then so go they couldn't on the back. Well, no, I, do you remember the <laughs> hands couldn't tap? The That's the energy. thing I would do, man. That's something I don't remember doing. Like, I was, <laughs> I don't remember holding people's hands so they couldn't Oh, man. Tap. You know yeah. who the worst was? Augie, man. Augie, he would never tap. And well, I, so Augie wouldn't tap, but I, I'll tell you the story of Augie, right? Because so Augie is so brutal, man. He's oh yeah, such a really good competitor. Yeah. But he's also built like this brown M M&M and M with like this little sprout. No neck. Legs. No neck. There's little sprouts for hands, and like same thing for like legs, right? Like, Balled yeah. up. But I remember starting to pass his guard, and he goes, uh uh-uh. and he grabs my nuts. <laughs> And I, and I, you don't know him. that move, no, dude. So, so he's got him, right? So, he's got him. So, he's framing shoulders That's bitch. and nuts. And I'm, and I'm passing, I'm doing like a knee cut, and I stop and I go, hmm. Augie, Augie. And he's like, huh? And I go, you're, uh, you're, you're grabbing me, my nuts. No, and then he goes, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so, he goes, are you, so I, are you, you gonna, gonna just go? let it go? No, so I was like, "Are you gonna let go?" And he goes, "Are you gonna pass?" And yeah, that's Augie. dude. So I go, "I'll go back in your guard." <laughs> and he didn't let go until I went back inside his guard, and then he lets, yep. he lets go. And I was that's like, "That's Augie." Fuck, man. God, those are the nasty days, the oil check days. <sighs> oil check days, the uh, the head head crank days. How long, how long, how long did you have, so when, how long was Daimyo open until I left? Was it like a year? No, uh, well, you know what? About a year and a half. Year and a half? Year and a half. So I remember you finally came on, because you, you came on and visited when I was in the, in the incubator, right? Yeah, and, next to the Sergeant yeah, Pepperonis. Yeah, yeah. And you, and then you finally started training when we moved into the first original big half. Yeah. So, so that was at about a, maybe like a year, you know, so like a year and a half. Yeah, that yeah. finally came on. Um, and then, right well, that was, the, I had to, man. So, and, and, you know, I always get asked the question like, oh, so how come you guys left or whatever? And, and whatever happened, happened. But at the end of the day, man, I mean, you know, I, I love the team that I had and all the guys there, but it was being selfish and having to, you know, think about okay what's my journey what am i going to do with my jiu-jitsu am i going to be here and staying the same or am i going to get better and because you know that, th- you were the only really at the time anybody that would be able to catch me or, or put it on me man and just oh, shit i'm gonna be i'm gonna catch each other dude. Caught, you would like left and from, right choke me out like left and right like unconscious from trying yeah. When you first came over, so it was just a matter of like we were really good training partners for one another, yeah. and the thing is that we had a really good open mind onto like, hey, let me show you what I just learned, you yeah, know? and because there wasn't any sort of bashing, so like I remember like we would try to like I remember I remember watching a some sort of like inversion, you know, yeah, and trying it in the gym and immediately being like, 
you know, insulted for that. You know, you're going upside down, bro. Yeah, you know? fuck that shit. Yeah, exactly. So stop watching YouTube. It's right. Yeah. So I remember, like, we we just really supported one another into like, hey, man, let's at least try it. Yeah. You know? But yeah. uh, you know, but that brings me to that brings me to like uh, having like a positive or having an understanding of like people will leave your team. Oh for yeah, whatever reason you know. Yeah. Um, and that's part of the journey. You know, that's part of the journey is as you know as your journey progresses, you you you'll have some people from from all the way to white belt to all the way to black belt, and they'll forever be with you. But there's a guy that will get to blue belt and be like, you know what, man, my journey is taking me somewhere else. Yeah. You know. And and you have to respect that man. And even though yeah. it might hurt your ego at the time, you have to support it. You have to encourage it and understand it and send them your way. But I love the way you said it, uh, which when whenever people left the team, you you said, "Dude, I don't have a problem with you leaving as long as you come back and show me what you're learning." Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's really what created the the open mindedness that we have today. You know, it's it was it was that it was like hey, like we can be, we can be this this family that trains together without holding any secrets or grudges or having, you know, or having this, this crazy jiu-jitsu politic of like, Oh, we hate, we hate. Cause that's really what it came down to. Right. You know, we hate this other guy, you know, and, uh, and, and I couldn't be your friend anymore, dude. That okay. was, it. that's what I said. I couldn't be your friend anymore. That's what it came you know, down to. It's, uh, it's like, really, really, really. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Oh, no, it's no. I, I lost friendships. After I left oh, yeah. Friendships. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I left friendships, which is funny because then those guys left too. And then, yeah. like, hi, Manny. And I'm like, oh, now you see my point of yeah. view. Now you want to friend me. Or, or or they would train with you secretly and you got to, you know, Dude, I don't, I you're don't, the Sancho. I don't do the secret, man. You know, it's, uh, I, you know, which is funny because some of those guys want to come train. You know, yeah. like, dude, I don't do the secret. That that is yeah. your policy, not mine. Yeah. So if you don't want to end up in a picture, don't come. Yeah. You know. And they were like, no, oh, I but, can't. It's okay. So all right, I won't come back anymore. I was like, all right, dude, cool. Man. Yeah. That's your that's your problem, not mine. But I, I dude, honestly, like, I, so if you look back at like how things are and how we have things compared to what we, you know, grew up in. You know, it's day and night, man, and 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 I think like our students have the perfect, you know, balance between we train hard, we we give ourselves, we're we're, we're we are professional coaches. We're not part time coaches. We don't have a nine to five. Yeah. Selfless. Oh yeah. Yeah, there, there's no, there's no like holding back. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, well, and that's and that and that's and I think that was the difference back in the day. It was like, if you train jujitsu, you were only going to be there from five o'clock to seven o'clock because it was the gym wasn't open, right? The the instructor was doing something else in the beginning, right? They 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 had their nine to five job, they're dead tired, and then they're teaching, right? And you, you you I remember there was a time where you were working like the horrible list shifts ever and you were you were barely there at the gym and i was yeah. teaching a lot and i remember that and it was like man i bet you he's he's just and i and i knew that you're like i'm done with this i i can't i can't do this anymore i want right. to i want to be with, i want to be cool. yeah and it was very cool of you man and that that speaks to also like how to be a really good training partner because i wouldn't admit how tired i was but i what it what it was happening was i would work from Let's say I would work from, I think it was like 3 a.m. Like my shift was, no, my shift was like 5 p.m. to 3 a.m. Yeah. You would come in in day. uniform and I'd be teaching. And I remember, ah, damn, I feel sorry for this dude. I know he wants to train. And or, right and or like later on, I would work 6 a.m. to 4 a.m. But have to come in the very next day at 3 a.m. Yeah. Cover. So I would work 3 a.m. to 4 p.m. And I remember still coming in and like my reptile brain like wanted to bang with you and you were yeah. like, dude, stop. Yeah. And I was like, no man, let's go. And you I want to bang, bro. Yeah, dude. Like you're like Manny. And I was like, you're right. You know? You're right. And then we float and we work on technique, you know, which is that's what a really good training partner does, you know. And uh, and so yeah, dude, it's it's no tapa, tapa. 
But um, dude, so let's talk a little bit about your your competition, man. Um, you go out there and you're a you're like the example of a guy that is cool, calm, and collected in the outside, right? And uh, like, and I, and I remember like same thing. Like people are like, "Oh, you're you're so cool, calm, and collected," but deep down inside, there's like this battle that is happening, right? Um, what's your What's your thought process in competition? How do you How do you prepare for competition? How does it change from like? Because there's something that people need to understand is like there's a mindset that takes you through training camp right and then there's a mindset that takes you through the week of training or the week of before the competition the day before competition the day of right and then about to step on the mats yeah yeah uh you know it's I, I i've had different phases with that i think the the biggest thing for me was like really my first competitions besides you i mean even before jujitsu was in may you know, um, yeah, f fighting and, 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 and having the battles in the gym. So for me, was like, I'm just doing jujitsu. You know, it's not a big thing. I, I was fighting grown men in a cage and it wasn't, you know, a scary thing to me. Yeah, I would lose in points or maybe, you know, um, I, I didn't want to lose because my whole team was watching. But it's one of those things, man, where you just got to clear – but it's easier said than done, right? And it does get better eventually as you progress, you know, and, and go up in the ranks. But even as a, you know, seasoned competitor, you'll still get the nerves, you know, but it's just how you deal with those nerves. And 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 you will hear the, the, the top black belts in the world say the same thing. It's just like you got to use that energy. You can, There's two ways you can go. You can use it to scare the shit out of you or you can use it to give you more power and, in, 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 you know, uh, get yourself um, – you know, just mentally prepared. So, um, you know, there's nothing really special that I do, man. It's just, I just believe in my training. I believe in my training partners. I, I, I make sure that I train as hard as I can. Um, you know, and it's just, it, 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 whether I lose or whether I win, as long as I gave it everything I had, I'm, I'm happy, you know? And yeah, it's annoying if you get, you lose by a, an advantage or if you lose by a, you know, a ref's decision or something like that. But at the end of the day, you know, it's okay. So you, you, you could have done something a little bit better or you're always going to have those what ifs, right? Even if you win, even if you, why didn't I submit them? I, I won in the finals by points, but I really wanted this. You're always going to have those afterthoughts, but it's just one of those things, man, where you're having those, the, those mental battles with yourself all the time. Just like you're saying, the month of, the week of, the day of, the minute of when you're right on there. You know, it's just how do you deal with those nerves? And I remember the one thing, too, is like when I was fighting, you have these tough guys that were in the back with the mohawks and tattoos all over their body. And those are the dudes that are throwing up in the corner. The you tap out t-shirts. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They had their tap out shirts on and they're hitting the bags and the mitts hard. And <laughs> But then, you know, 10 minutes later, they're throwing up in the corner or a grown man crying. You know, it's like, oh, you can look the part, but you're yeah. not. So, you know, that was one of the things where I felt like I was, you know, at least uh, mentally strong. I, I, didn't, I didn't think I had it. Um, I would break mentally. You know, I would get tired or I maybe didn't have the best technique that day, but I knew that mentally I'd be prepared. So that's beautiful, man. So if you, um, if you were to like talk to uh, like a first time competitor or somebody that's dealing with nerves, man, how would you walk them through the process of facing those fears um, and get into where they're able to perform at a tournament? Yeah. So, you know, it's, and I get that question a lot because I have a lot of white belts. I have a lot of beginners that are, you know, they want to compete or, you know, and they're having restless nights for the whole month before the competition and it's like you can't do that to yourself man you know always think about what you're gonna do you know always think about how you're gonna impose your will what how, how are you gonna win what are the what are the thousand ways that you're gonna win how are you gonna win you know and, but it's it's just one of those things where it's like you, you can't let it disrupt your training your life your sleep like I'll have guys that I can't that can't sleep because they're thinking about their match that's six weeks away, 
It's like, dude, you still have a lot of time, man. And, and really, it's if you put the time in, if you put the training in that you're supposed to, there should be no doubt in your mind that you're going to have the cardio, you're going to have the technique, you're, you've trained, you know, all the techniques that you imagine yourself doing out there. Trust in your, believe in your jujitsu, right? And your jujitsu will believe in you. That's, I still say that to those guys. And that's what it is, man. You just got to believe in your training, believe in your team, believe in your training partners. And man, we got, I mean, you know this, we've got a killer squad. Like I'm so like impressed with the team that we have right now. And that, killers, man. Dude, killers. I cannot, I just, I, I'm amazed. Dude. Like it's, it's, astonishing the talent that we have like not only the talent that we've built but the talent that's coming to us you know like right. it, it's 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 humbling it is because you're like oh wow you know this person from this you know place wants to come train with us and you know it's great you know and it's and it only makes our team better you know and and we go out there but i think the biggest thing too is like the beginner white belts see us compete right there with them you know that's what gave me confidence in my just courage just seeing the the purple belts on my team or the brown belts on my team when i was coming up oh man they're right there with me so we're good we're you know we're you're you you know you were the biggest one too you know you you were the one that i looked up a lot to where oh man manny's doing it so i gotta do it like we're, we're gonna be right there win lose or what a draw you know i'm with my army and with my squad you know, that right there is what makes things 10 times easier when you compete, you know, but having your coach compete next to you, that's a big thing, you know, and, you know, I try to set that, we, we set that example, we, we compete a lot, you know, we didn't, I, I didn't have that, you know, and it was one of the things where, again, I was looking up to you or like Gabe or, you know, Roland or, you know, Anthony, all those guys to, you know, give me courage. Like, okay, hey, if those guys are going to do it and they're going to put their, you know, pride on the line or jujitsu on the line, so am I, you know. So I think leading by example definitely makes those nerves makes, go away. It makes a huge, it makes a huge, sure. 100%, yeah, 100%. For sure. And, you know, there's, there's not, not talking smack, but there's coaches that talk about it and there's coaches that be about it. And we are the coaches that be about it 100%. Well, yeah. And, uh, and one thing that drives me crazy, man, is that the coaches that talk about it are the ones that are the harshest on their students. Oh, yeah. Right? It's like, oh, I can't believe you fucking lost, blah, blah, yeah. blah. You know, I'm like, bro, I don't see you out there competing. I don't see you mm -hmm. out there going through having to humble yourself to put yourself yeah. out there. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I think that a coach that competes is a humble coach and it's a more understanding coach. And those are the ones that want to fight in the, in the, in the, in the uh, crowd, too. Those are the ones that want to. Start they want to start shit. Oh, you're like, okay, no. Yeah. Okay. No, okay. So, dude, I, I want to I wanna end this with, like, a little bit of a, of a story of, like, um, why I'm so happy and excited for, for you, for your success, for your academy. Um, to me, it's, uh, music has always had, like, a huge influence, right? And, uh, and I always uh, listen to, like, a lot of interviews with singers and people talk about singing or playing an instrument. And the biggest thing was... Um, I remember there was a guitarist talking to a, a person that wanted to pick up an instrument, right? And they said, okay, I get that you want to start playing an instrument, but what do you want to say with this instrument? What, what, what voice do you have with this thing, right? Yeah. And I remember before you opened your academy, uh, we were talking about, man, I want to do it. I want to open my academy. I don't know, you know, should I do it? Should I do it? You know, we were talking about, you were talking, you were hesitant about like pulling the trigger. And one of the things that I, that yeah. I told you was, dude, is like you and I have had enough conversations where I know you have a voice, right? And what I mean by you feel have you have a voice is you have something to say in the world of jiu-jitsu, man. And, and it shows in how happy your students are. It shows in how successful your students are. It shows in the belief your students have, um, not only in their academy, but in yourself. Um, and it shows in the difference you're making in the community out in the in Tucson. And to me, that's that's uh, that's what a instructor should be, man. It's an instructor that has a voice. You have something to say, and I'm so excited to be just another member of the audience 
listen to you playing that instrument, which is which is jujitsu, man. So like a tambourine, like a tambourine, just like yeah. a just like a beautiful, or like a or like um, what are the what are those guitars with the four little strings with the half naked boy? Oh, I don't know what he has to go with it, but I imagine you playing it like Hello. wings. Hello. <laughs> but uh, dude, any parting words, man? Anything you got? No, man. Just uh, you know, I uh, appreciate you having me on. It's just uh, it's one of those things, man, where you get to chill, talk to your talk to your boy, shoot the shit. But because we man. haven't seen each other, dude, in forever. Jesus. I mean, Christ. you send me nudes. You send me nudes. That's, well, but it, like, well, my mom would want because she passed yeah. away, you know. So it's what uh, she would want. She would want that. She would want that. She would. So, dude, it was uh, it was a pleasure having you on, man, and uh, and I'm sure that people will enjoy it, getting to know you a little bit more, um, and uh, and tell us a little bit about your academy, where it's at, where people can come, then how they can connect with you on social media and your yeah, yeah. So uh, the Irie, uh, South Side, BJJ, uh, Irvington I-19. Um, Got a good squad. We're we're uh, well. We were in the process of expanding, but obviously we're all closed down. But then 2020 like, was like nah. Woo! I don't like that shit. I don't like that I don't shit. Like that I'm gonna shit. have to drive on the. Yeah. I'm gonna have to drop a dime drop on that bike. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Damn. No man. But yeah. So uh, yeah, man. We we got a good squad. Uh, obviously, uh, us together we make Paragon Arizona, man. And woo, we got again the, the killer squad kill this squad so um but other than that man that's all we got much love brother and uh i can't wait to to choke you out again oh so, okay yeah that's not uh, how you end, that's not how you end this conversation well, right? I, I, I got a little thick i'm like 215 right now are you oh, you're fat yeah. Dude, i'm 227 so I'm, I'm i'm staying low i'm staying low yeah. for um because my weight division is 217 if i can make 217 i can find it 222 Oh, that's good. I, got a, I got a fat ass, bro. Oh, yeah. All right. Do. So we'll end it in this. Love you. Kisses. Bye, and I hope you guys enjoy, man.